about the increased state revenues tonight? The governor will talk about that tomorrow. This is a tax increase you're talking about. The governor has been talking about the importance of addressing our problems for the uh, 14 months that he's been in office, and he will talk about that tomorrow because Illinois needs us to take action and we need to step up and resolve this fiscal crisis. So has he made a decision on if he'll call for an income tax hike? <clears throat> Why don't we go ahead to the numbers and then we'll get back to those questions. Does million estimate for revenues include the money from a tax increase? No. So the 27.4 million dollars that you just mentioned? No. Jerry, can you at least say whether it's going to be the same plan as the last year? You know, the governor will talk about that tomorrow. Noon, sharp. I guess not. <laughs> you want to talk about the numbers and then the media can ask questions after. We just have a couple more things that, David, if you want to address, you could go ahead. And then yes, we did. We posted the preliminary budget, uh, a summary of it, uh, including uh, by agency and the uh, uh, various tables on February 24th. That was a preliminary budget. Uh, the governor continued to have us work the budget, make changes in the budget that he thought were necessary. Many of them responded to the comments that we received, as Jerry has, uh, has set forth. If I could just briefly summarize those, uh, we put our pen to pencil in the federal revenues and found that we believe that we're going to get more federal revenues than we expected. Um, revenues, federal revenues are very closely related to the spending you do. And when you change the spending in Medicaid and other areas, you also change the federal revenues. And so, uh, we have a higher estimate of that in the uh, in the budget we're doing now. In the uh, spending areas uh, of education, human services, economic development, health care, public safety, uh, we actually reduced from February 24th, the governor did, uh, the, uh, the cuts by about $600 million and uh, increased the cuts uh, in the local distributive share and in the uh, uh, claiming some cl uh, reductions from the pension stabilization. So we're at the same number of cuts, they're just moved around a little bit differently uh, to clearly reflect those priorities. Those net changes then result in an operating deficit uh, when you consider revenues and spending of about $4.7 billion in new debt or new uh, shortfall in fiscal 11. Now that's of course on top of the $6 billion that carries over from last year. So after the proposed cuts, we still have uh, approximately an $11 billion problem. Uh, this budget that we are presenting uh, shows the consequences of inaction last year. Had we raised taxes last year as the governor called for, we wouldn't be seeing deficits of this scope. Uh, Jerry asked me to comment on borrowing. It's very important that we be able to access the capital markets. We have a, a, a capital program that calls for over the next few years borrowing uh, 12 or 13 billion dollars. The interest rate we achieve on that borrowing is hugely important. Uh, if we were to suffer a double downgrade down to what California is at today, for each billion of that debt we issue, it'll cost us another 100 million in interest over the life of those bonds. Uh, we're a double A state based on our economy. We're not a double A state today based on the actions that we've taken in our budget. And this needs to be changed. Uh, the short term borrowing is important. A lot of people that we talk to and a lot of the comments we got compare our borrowing, they're skeptical about our borrowing and they compare it really to their own situations about their own credit cards. And people today are trying to reduce their own household debt, their own credit card debt. Very often it's at very high rates. You know, certainly double digit rates, sometimes over 20%. Sovereign states don't borrow on a credit card. Our last short-term borrowing on August 27th of 09, we paid 1.003%. Uh, it's important that the state use its borrowing tools to help our citizens and help balance our budget. It's one of the five pillars, and that's why we want to continue to use it. But the bond rating agencies and the investors want us to get our house in order. Uh, they want us to balance our operational budget, and they want us to do pension reform. And so the governor continues to call for both of those. What, what, is, what are voucher payment notes? Uh, we, we got one right here, and we'll get back to you. Go we, ahead. Voucher payment notes, we footnoted that in our, in our budget. We said uh, in the footnote, it's a series of notes to pay specific vouchers during the fiscal year. It's really just a series of borrowing techniques. We can use various kinds of short-term borrowing. We can use rainy day fund borrowing of the other funds we already have on deposit in the state that are not in the general revenue fund. 
Uh, last year, we proved that we can issue pension obligation notes. We issued $3.5 billion five-year notes, 3.84% interest. On that $3.5 billion in notes, we got $8 billion in bids. So the voucher payment notes will really be a series of different kinds of notes and borrowing uh, that are approved by the General Assembly, uh, like the $250 million they approved last week. Uh, that we'll use to bring this budget into balance. But Obviously, you have to do more, but if the legislature decides to use other techniques, like raising more revenues, then we don't have to borrow as much. So this is about a half a billion dollars over what the increased, no, it's pension, actually, over what the increased pension payment will be. Are we looking at another five years?